This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. After all that talk about what the Houston Texans would do with the second overall pick, they do wind up taking C.J. Stroud last night. Will Levis falls outside the first round. It was a fun draft. We'll talk more about the draft. Talk about some win totals coming up on Monday with Ryan Williams. He'll swing by there. Today, we're going to talk some APL. We're going to talk Match Week 34 with Austin Cass. And I'll break down some baseball bets I like for today as well. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. Joined here as mentioned by Austin Cass. Check him out on Twitter at Austin Cass. He is a senior editor for numberfire.com. And Austin, we're going to talk EPL, but you are an Indianapolis Colts fan. And I know we were slacking yesterday about CJ Stroud. It seems like you wanted him, but honestly, if the consolation prize is you get true for Anthony Richardson, that's kind of fun, no matter how it turns out. So how are you today on this Friday? Yeah, I'm doing really well, and yeah, I agree. I I wanted Stroud, um, but I'll take Richardson over Levis. I'm really excited about it. It should be fun. Even when it's not going well, it should be entertaining. So, yeah, it's just after what I've watched at quarterback for the last few years, just to have something new that, hey, he's going to be the guy for a few years, like, yeah, feels good. And he can physically move, which is a difference. <laughs> um, that's a positive as well. Uh, after Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan, it's a – radically different change in that regard how nervous were you when stroud went second the betting odds like i think levis is like minus 250 to go forth at one point or so how nervous were you that they would go levis instead of richardson there i was very nervous i thought they were pretty much for sure going to take levis just yeah. going by the odds that had moved that way throughout the day and yeah i just wasn't going to be real happy but yeah seeing levis fall out of the first like that was just really crazy to watch and yeah, it'll be interesting to see where he goes today. Yeah, interesting for sure. I think that the hooker one will be interesting too. So it's going to be a fun second round as well. A lot of fun prospects still left. But we'll talk more about that again on Monday with Ryan Williams. Now we're going to talk some EPL with Austin. Austin, we'll do that in a second here. But first, when we had you on the first time, I believe it was your first time here on Covering the Spread to talk uh, about EPL, you mentioned Man City to win the whole dang thing. And they're now minus 1,200. So you get Anthony Richardson. You've got Man City. After that big win earlier on this week, now minus 1,200, everything's coming up Austin right now. Yeah, it feels like it. I think most of the bets hit that we talked about last week. All three. Show, no, so, all three. Yeah, Not it, most. It was all of them. Yeah, things are going well. I got to take it as it comes and just be happy with it. <laughs> I love it. Well, happy to have you here. We'll talk about Match Week 34 in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. If you're looking for some NASCAR and F1 thoughts. I had uh, my thoughts on those on yesterday's show. They are timestamps. If you want to skip beyond the stuff for Thursday, get to those. Just go to uh, the episode description and find the timestamp for Formula One and NASCAR. That is right there. And again, we'll talk more NFL coming up next week on Monday with Ryan Williams. Let's dive in now and talk about EPL match week 34, though, Austin. Pretty light slate on Saturday with just three games. Looking at that Saturday slate, which bets are you targeting at FanDuel Sports Week? Okay, so despite just three games, actually like a handful of things on Saturday, um, I'm going to start with the Brentford match against Nottingham Forest. My favorite bet of the weekend is Brentford to win, which is minus 155. Pretty much any way you want to slice it, Brentford are the much better team. Uh, they're seventh in the Premier League and expect a goal differential per FB refs expect a goal model. Uh, Forest is 19th. Forest have lost seven straight road matches and they're dead last in road goal differential for the season. Brentford, on the other hand, are sixth in home uh, goal differential. So really the only thing Forest have going for them is that this match means a lot more to them because they're in a relegation fight and Brentford are uh, headed toward a mid table finish and don't really have a ton to play for right now, but that's not enough to push me off of Brentford. Brentford just won two well at Chelsea midweek, despite having not having that much to play for. So I really like them at this minus 155 number. And it actually last night was minus 145. So things are moving that way. Um, and then with that, I also like Yvonne Tony to score a goal, which is plus 110. He's the clear focal point in attack for Brentford. He's got 19 league goals this year. No other Brentford player has more than six. 
and he's an excellent pen penalty taker, maybe the best in the Premier League. He's converted seven of his eight chances from the spot this year. So really like Brentford, and I really like Tony to get on the end of a few goal-scoring chances. Yeah, Tony, plus 110 for an anytime goal over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, Brentford to win, as you mentioned, minus 155 after being minus 145 last night. So there's some interest there. Make sure to get that one. If you still can at this uh, current number, how much does motivation sway things for you? Um, because you mentioned that Nottingham Forest may have more motivation than Brentford. It, how much does that worry you? Like, how much does that dissuade things for you? Or is a situation where everyone's going to try hard? Do you judge it based on how hard they tried previously? You mentioned the Chelsea match. Like, how much does that weigh in for you? It factors in some. Um, in this instance, it's not enough to make up what I think is a pretty big gap between the two, especially with this match at Brighton. If the match was at Nottingham Forest, I'd probably stay away from this game, obviously okay. depending on what the lines were. But it matters for me some. If uh, if if I'd seen if Brent, if I thought Brentford was maybe just kind of like mailed it in here for the past few games, maybe that would change it. But they've actually been playing really well, and yeah. So yeah, it's not enough to make up, like I said, a pretty big gap between these two. Yeah, I think that, like you mentioned, seeing them play well midweek, I think that actually is pretty impactful because that's what I do in the NFL is like if a team has no motivation, but they're still playing pretty hard, uh, like the Rams for certain parts of last year, like that to me says a lot and does definitely impact the way I view things. Anything else you like on the Saturday side, Austin, across the other two games? Yeah, so I like Brighton to go over one and a half goals, which is it's minus 178. Should be in the goals tab. Yep. Uh, Brighton are legitimately just like one of the best teams in the league in all areas, especially going forward. They've amassed the four, fourth most expected goals, and they have at least uh, 1.7 expected goals in 12 of their past 14 matches. Um, should be under the home team. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, there's, there's markets, I get lost too sometimes. Um, Brent, or, uh, Brighton have scored eight goals across their last three home matches. I don't think Wolves are going to be the side to slow them down. Wolves have conceded at least two goals in three of their last four road matches, and they've conceded at least 1.8 expected goals in each of their past four road matches against teams in the top nine. Plus, uh, Brighton scored three at Wolves earlier this season, so the minus 178 juice isn't fun, and it actually was minus 165 uh, last night. So just like the other bet, it's kind of moved the way I wanted it to, but... Um, wish people could have gotten it sooner, but it's just a bet I really like. Yeah, minus 178, the implied odds there, 64% for Brighton to go over one and a half goals against Wolves. Uh, again, that is in the goals tab over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Half of this is you teaching me EPL. The other half is you teaching me how to navigate the FanDuel Sportsbook uh, on desktop because obviously <laughs> I'm not as familiar with these uh, yeah. in that regard. It's uh, there. There's so many markets for soccer. Like yeah. It's, yeah, it gets crazy. I wish I had that problem in NASCAR. I don't, but I wish I did for sure. Okay, so bets Austin likes for Saturday. Brighton over one and a half goals at minus 178. He likes Brentford to win at minus 155. And Yvonne Tony to score a goal at plus 110 in that Brentford match as well. Bit of a beefier slate for Sunday. We got five games on or five matches on Sunday, Austin. When you look at those, any bets you like over at FanDuel? Uh, the bet I like most for Sunday is... Um... Alexander Izak to score a goal in the Newcastle match. Um, we've talked about Newcastle or Izak on this show before. Both he and Newcastle are just playing lights out right now. Newcastle have scored at least two goals in seven of their past eight matches. And in that stretch, Izak has racked up seven goals. And he's only started six of the games. Um, I think both of them can keep rolling against uh, Southampton. Southampton are the last place team in the league. They pretty much are doomed to be relegated. Um, the Isaac should have a few chances to score. Newcastle are playing just fantastic right now. And as a bonus in their match last night, uh, Isaac came off the bench, so he should be rested and ready to go. So I think all signs I, point to him having a few chances to score. I believe Isaac was the one you mentioned a couple weeks ago were to wait until the lineups were out to see if he was in the starting lineup. But it sounds like because he didn't start recently, you expect it's pretty firm he'll start Sunday? Yeah, I would say most likely he will, but I'm never going to 
push back on someone waiting to see the starting sure. lineup. So sure. Okay. Isak is minus one Oh five to score for the Newcastle versus Southampton game. And Austin is on that one across the Sunday matches over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Austin, it was a fun time having you on here once again for today. I'm going to send you off to go enjoy, go watch some Anthony Richardson, YouTube highlights. Um, maybe go stare at the, the, the man city tickets, stuff like that. Enjoy your weekend. A pleasure having you on and good luck to you this weekend. Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Check out Austin on Twitter at Austin Cass. Find his work. EPL betting guide is up now as well over at numberfire.com if you want to read Austin's thoughts in written form. We'll dive on in to the baseball slate for this Friday here in just one second. But first, the NBA playoffs are here. and You can get on the action right from first tip with FanDuel. Right now, all customers can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend when you bet the NBA playoffs. That's right. Just place a three plus leg same game parlay or same game parlay plus on any NBA playoff game and you'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Head to the FanDuel app and get a no sweat same game parlay every weekend. Uh, when you bet on the NBA, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA, must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Massachusetts, hope is here. Gambling helpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-789. 7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in indiana 1-800-9 with it in wyoming and kansas 1-800-522-4700 or in kansas ksgamblinghealth.com louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP in maryland mdgamblinghealth.org and in west virginia go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net Let's talk here about tonight's MLB slate over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Plenty of games available for tonight, and there is one game that presents a couple spots that I'm looking to bet. That is for the Brewers and the Angels, and I like both the money line here and an under on Tyler Anderson. Let's, let's check out both those right now. The Brewers' money line is minus 142. Anderson's strikeout prop uh, is sitting right now uh, five and a half under is minus 154. And these two bets are correlated for me because... A lot of the reason I should have value on the Brewers' money line is because Anderson has struggled a lot so far this year. His velocity is down, uh, his spin rate is down, and it's led to some pretty rough outings so far this year. Looking at Anderson across 2023, he has a 12% strikeout rate. His swinging strike rate is 9.8%. It's been pretty rough. Now, a 9.5% swinging strike rate does imply that the strikeout rate should increase, but it's a lot lower than last year. I'm skeptical it'll increase to the point where there's no value in under five and a half at minus 154. The Brewers are a massively high strikeout team against lefties, and I'm guessing that's why Anderson's number is so high here, but I don't think the matchup could overcome the issues he has right now. So Anderson under five and a half strikeouts, minus 154. The first leg of this one where I'm seeing some value. The second part again is the Brewers money line that is tied heavily uh, to the thoughts on Anderson and his issues with getting strikeouts. But it's also, I think, an appreciation of Wade Miley, who has a very difficult matchup, but Miley has done a nice job so far this year. Last year, the year before as well, suppressing hard contact. He has an above average bullpen, above average defense behind him. I think there's enough value here for me to buy into what the numbers are saying. So the individual bets here, uh, the Brewers money line at minus 142. I do like the Anderson strikeout prop under five and a half at minus 154. Now you've heard me say countless times in the show, I'm not a huge fan of parlaying things together to parlay them together. I'm not a huge same game parlay person either. I think that this situation where the bets actually do mesh pretty well, they correlate together. FanDuel knows that they're not stupid, uh, but you could same game parlay those together. Plus 150 is a number on that. It's not amazing as far as how much of a tie in you're getting at plus 150, because again, FanDuel knows those bets are correlated, but that is a consideration. If you are a same game parlay fan, you can check that out. Anderson under five and a half. Brewers money line plus 150 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. 
I think that works. Personally, I'm probably going to go with them. If I have gone with them individually as opposed to tying them together. But if you want to, you know, get a better number, the same game probably is available plus 150 for the Brewers to win and Anderson under five and a half strikeouts. The second money line where I'm showing value for today is a team we discussed quite a bit, not always with the best results, but that's the Houston Astros minus 144 to beat the Philadelphia Phillies. My model is the Astros at 64% to win up from 59% implied. I assume the reasoning here is because of the starting pitching matchup. Framber Valdez is on one side uh, starting here for the Astros. He has had better velocity so far this year, and he's used that better velocity to increase his strikeout rate without sacrificing the tremendous fly ball rate that he has. He basically just lets up a ton of ground balls, no fly balls. That's the way you want to play things. You want strikeouts and ground balls? Valdez gets both those. Across his first five starts this year with that increased velocity, five or 2.98 skill interactive ERA for Valdez. He has been tremendous. Aaron Nola starting here for the Phillies has at times had issues on the road and not sure if that'll be the case this year, but so far this year, Nola has just struggled overall entering the year. I'd kind of flagged him as a guy I might be a bit wary of because he had a very long pace between pitches and now you had a pitch clock and That could be an issue for a guy like Nola trying to adjust. His velocity has been down. It has not been getting that much better. And it's led to pretty poor advanced numbers. Now, when I'm projecting this game, building out my model, I have expected progression in there from Nola. I don't expect what he's done in 2023 to be his new baseline. So I expect improvements, and they're pretty major ones, honestly. But even with baking in improvements for Nola, I still have the Astros as pretty heavy favorites in this game. So... 64% to win for me, 59% implied at minus 144. I think that the Astros, a good value. So the two money lines for today, I like the Brewers at minus 142 against the Angels and the Astros at minus uh, 144 against the Phillies. Two other strikeout props other than Anderson have to check on these because I have not seen them since we started talking to Austin. The first one is in the Mariners-Blue Jays game. I have interest in Alec Manoa under five and a half strikeouts. And we'll see where that number is at right now. Under five and a half is minus 128 for Manoa. It was minus 126. So that's stayed pretty much the same. I think you can still get a minus 115 elsewhere. So shop around on this one for Manoa under five and a half strikeouts. I think there is value even at minus 128 at FanDuel Sportsbook. I've got Manoa projected for 4.75 strikeouts tonight. He need to get six to get in over here. So about 1.25 strikeouts a cushion. That bodes well for an under. Manoa has been cutting back on his 14 fastball for nine starts now. And in those nine starts, his strikeout rate is 19.5%. That number is higher than his strikeout rate this year. So I'm expecting, similar to Noah, Manoa to increase his strikeout rate as the year goes along. But this also means that his low rate this year is not entirely new because even when you include some last year data, it's still pretty low. Manoa... Has gotten to five strikeouts three times this year in five starts. So he is flirting with the over here. He is at home. He goes deep in games. I understand why this number is where it is for Manoa, but he has not gotten over five and a half strikeouts as of yet. I still think there's value under five and a half at minus 128. I would probably back off if it gets to minus 135 or minus 140 probably somewhere around there is where i start to get really nervous just because again he does go deep in games been flirting with the over here for sure so at minus 128 i'd take it but if it gets a little bit higher that's where i'd start to get a little bit worried final strikeout prop that i'm liking for today also under five and a half just sticking with that exact same trend and going out to the dodgers and the cardinals game the final game of the night i like dustin may under five and a half strikeouts that was, uh, it is now minus 140 right now, FanDuel Sportsbook for Dustin May under. And a couple things align to make the under pretty viable here. The first one is May is facing a low strikeout Cardinals offense, about 21% against righties. They're uh, slightly better than average in terms of strikeout rate against righties. Second, they're very good. Um, they could chase a guy early because they are just a very good offense. Third, we've seen May make 11 starts since he returned at the beginning of last year. and. He's topped five and a half strikeouts just twice in 11 starts. Now, one of those was last week, his most recent start. And it came when he went back to using his slider more than he had been earlier on this year. 
if you were to guarantee me May would be using his slider more going forward, I would probably back off this number, but it's not a guarantee. I don't want a one game boost in a pitch where he hit the over by a half strikeout to override all the other data. I have May projected for 4.83 strikeouts tonight, and I think that's a big enough gap for me to take the under. So strikeout props for today, Dustin May under 5.5 minus 140, Tyler Anderson under 5.5 at minus 154, and Alec Manoa under 5.5 strikeouts at minus 128 On in addition to the money lines. Now, as we discussed, not a huge home run prop market guy because I just don't think it's my strength and I want to bet towards my strengths. But there are actually two I feel pretty good about for tonight over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The first one is in Colorado for the Rockies and the Diamondbacks. And it is not full Coors Field for tonight because uh, the temperatures are in the 50s. So you take Coors Field, you downgrade it a bit because the temperature is low. I still think there's value in Ryan McMahon at 5-1 to one to go deep for the Rockies. McMahon is a guy who barrels up the ball a lot. He has a 20% barrel rate so far this year. His hard hit rate is 50%. His fly ball rate, 37%. He strikes out too much. That's definitely a, a downside to this because he's facing Merrill Kelly, who can occasionally get some strikeouts. His main issue has been walks so far this year, and walks aren't dingers. So that definitely is not a super positive thing. Kelly does get some ground balls. There are reasons why McMahon's number is 5-1. to one. But you're getting me a guy with the platoon advantage at Coors Field facing a pitcher who has had some issues so far this year, which may mean to may lead to increased exposure to middle relievers. I think that all adds up well to make McMahon a good value. Again, five to one, the home run prop bet for Ryan McMahon, uh, given his 20% barrel rate, all the hard contact and a decent fly ball rate. I think that lines up well to make McMahon a good value at five to one. The other guy I considered here is Brenton Doyle, just got called up for the Rockies. A little bit worried about strikeouts with him, more so than with McMahon. He's plus 750. I gave thought to it. Couldn't quite pull the trigger there, especially given if it were like 70 at Den in Denver, maybe I'd do it. But I think for right now, we'll stick with just McMahon at 5-1. to one. The other strike or home run prop that I like for tonight is a guy who hit three home runs across this weekend, Adelis Garcia, facing off against Clark Schmidt. And Clark Schmidt is getting a good number of strikeouts so far this year. He also has been better against righties in his career, but he has let up a 43% fly ball rate to righties, so it's not as if he is super, super restrictive. Garcia was 5-1 to one to go deep earlier on today. It's plus 480. I think there's still value in that number. If you check it later on today and it's shorter than plus 80, 450 or so, then I'm probably going to divest at that point. But plus 480 right now, I think that that's still make a lot of sense because Garcia, although he's a righty, does hit righties well. He's a 222 ISO versus righties since the start of last year. His fly ball rate is 39%. Been hitting the ball, obviously, very well so far this year. So I want to buy into Garcia. Plus 480, the number for Garcia to go deep. I think that makes a lot of sense. So two home run props are today. Ryan McMahon, 5-1. to one. Adelius Garcia, plus 480. I think both those uh, totally fine bets and ones that I am on board with. That is all that we have here for today on Covering the Spread. Want to give a big thank you once again to Austin Cass. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at Austin Cass and check out his work over at numberfire.com. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. We'll be back with you on Monday talking about the NFL draft, talking NFL win totals with Ryan Williams, getting his read on those. Kentucky Derby thoughts coming up early next week too. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast to get all these as they go live each and every weekday. I'll talk to you all once again next week. Have a fantastic weekend. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 